You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob. Thank you for joining us. We are very, very appreciative that you are here today. As always, we know you have a lot of options and you're hanging with us. So thank you very much for doing that. Yes, thank you very much. We really do appreciate your support and your engagement uh, when you're asking questions through Ask Drone You, when you're talking to the community about things that you've heard on Drone You, and when you leave us reviews on places like iTunes and Stitcher or wherever you download podcasts. All those things, well, they really make us feel pretty grateful. So thank you. Before we get into today's show, some new things have been kind of squirreling around the market and we wanted to get a get a touch in to really talk about these things. There's a lot of chatter online right now about the July 18th update from DJI. They're planning on releasing something new and everyone's wondering what it's going to be. The guy who's been getting most of these, how do I say this, uh, these rumors correct over time is saying that it could be the new Mavic Pro 2 that we see July 18th. Mm. Um, now, that would be really interesting. He's also saying that there could be multiple types or multiple variations of the Mavic Pro 2, just like we see with the Phantoms. And he's even saying that we could see a one inch sensor, a one over 1.7 inch sensor, and a couple other things, even variable zoom, which would be really uh, powerful. That would be cool. Yeah. I want one. Yeah, I do too. If it has that. So we'll see what happens July 18th. But um, if statistics prove correct, then I think this guy could be right. We'll see. He did call the Phantom 4 uh, Pro V2 coming out, which, by the way, I also wanted to give you guys just a quick update. As you know, this is the fastest way that we can get information out to you. And we've had the Phantom 4 Pro version 2 for two weeks now. And there's a couple things that you should know about it. Uh, number one, it is an awesome bird. The camera's awesome. Flight time, pretty much unchanged. Uh, the low noise props, is it a noticeable, audible difference? Yes, it's only four decibels, though, according to our measurements. That may be significant. But for me, I would rather have the regular props that make a lot more noise because the bird doesn't act so squirrely in de-elevation sequences. So mm. I'm can noticed, you use the old props on it? Yeah, you, you sure can. It's no problem? Um, no problem. But they've tuned the Phantom 4 Pro V2 to take yawing turns um, a little s- more slowly. Um, it The drone acts really squirrely when you're de-elevating it or when you're just trying to you know make faster movements. It's not as stable. The low noise, you're giving up some stability. Now, most pilots won't even recognize this. So if you're kind of like one of those, um, um, how do I say this, float and go pilots, you're probably not going to really notice a big difference. <laughs> but if you're kind of one of these guys that's, you know, putting drones to their paces, you're going to notice it right away. So make sure. Yeah, I think it's important. But to, still usable, still a viable bird, as you said. Oh, yeah, totally. Great bird for cool. mapping, too. I mean, we're loving it. It's becoming good. a good replacement for our Phantom 4 Pro, so very grateful for that. Uh, we are waiting on some in mapping integrations, though. There are still some integrations that haven't connected with the Phantom 4 Pro V2 yet. So it's very, very important to understand that it doesn't work with all mapping applications just yet. In other news, we are heading to another training on the East Coast this coming up week, so we're excited about that. Um, also, just wanted to make sure that you guys are aware the drone you fly in um, if you haven't signed up for the fly-in, there's only a few spots left. So make sure you check out DroneUFlyIn.com. Why would you want to go to the Drone You fly in? Let me give you five reasons. Number one, 10 flight-based missions. Number two, you get to practice the missions as in stages. So you're going to go through each mission. There are 10. There are multiple stages to each mission. And you're competing for drones and you're competing for money. Reason number three, Pix4D is going to be giving a class uh, or a talk, whatever you would call it, about a, a summarized, simplistic way to get the most accuracy out of your maps possible. Reason number four, uh, Bill English with the NTSB is going to be showcasing how they've been doing accident reconstruction on a federal level with drones using photogrammetry. Um, Very cool. In addition to that, We've got a lot of other speakers and other prizes lined up, but you're going to have to find out more. Just go to DroneUFlyIn.com. That's Drone, D-R-O-N-E, the letter U-F-L-Y, 
N.com. Check it out. Indeed. So before we get into the question, we want to say thank you to our friends over at DynexDrones.com. That is D-Y-N-N-E-X D-R-O-N-E-S dot com. If you guys are looking to upgrade your equipment to take your business to the next level, or you're trying to get started and you want to buy some equipment so you can get your business going, well, they've got a great way to do it with very, very little money down because they've got a way for you to do it in in payments. And so we want to check them out at uh, DynexDrones.com. Use the code DRONEUSAVE, the number 25 and you'll get 25 bucks off your first purchase with our, your entire purchase I should say with dynextrones.com. So check them out, easy to work with, and uh, if you have any questions you can reach out to them as well. Hey Paul, hey Rob, Kevin New Jersey. Got kind of a two-part question here r- with regards to mapping. One is do some of the higher end cameras like the Hasselblad and the Phase 1 medium formats, they have a rolling shutter issue uh, as far as I can tell from googling it. They'd use electronic shutter and the readout of the sensor, I can't tell exactly, but may or may not be that of, a, you know, reading it row by row, creating that rolling shutter problem. And then also, what are some examples of cameras with a, a global shutter option? So I thought like the Sony A7s, A7 III, even maybe the A6500 when you don't put it on silent shutter, that that's a global shutter. Um, you know, can you mount those under, say, like an M600 on a Ronin MX and use that for mapping? Or are you still going to run into a rolling shutter issue? And, you know, is it is it that significant depending on what speed you're going? Because I think, I can't remember, but I thought in Pix4D Mapper you can set the speed at which you fly the grid. And I noticed that, you know, it, the drone doesn't stop, it seems like, to take a picture. It just keeps flying and snapping pictures while it's traversing. But um, if it stopped, I guess you wouldn't really have the rolling shutter issue. It would just stop and take the whole picture all in the same time stamp. But I'm just wondering, you know, are there good cameras out there that as an option, if you didn't want to go the Phantom 4 Pro route, that you could mount a camera under an M600 that would definitely have a global shutter and mitigate the rolling shutter issue? All right. Thanks. Thank you, Ken. Sure appreciate it all the deep dives that you do on this information that you then send in questions for. It's a lot of fun to hear from you, which we get to do quite a bit. And you always always have great questions. And this is no exception. Um, So, Paul, you've been doing a little digging into these uh, shutter issues. Uh, Ken, thank you for sending me on a rabbit trail this morning and uh, calling some people and (laughs) and getting down to this answer because uh, it's it's an answer that I've actually been – uh, trying to get to for a while because the phase one cameras have a very unique type of shutter. So I want to take this question in stages. Stage one is uh, the phase one cameras, those higher end cameras. Uh, the second part, we'll talk about the Sony series for a good ultimate mapping drone. And then the third part is, you know, how do we get this without this expensive gear? So uh, number one, the phase one cameras. Um, John McBride, he's a big proponent of the Phase 1 cameras. He offers these cameras under an M600. They're 50 megapixels and 100 megapixel cameras. It's really important to know one thing, though. Before you get into mapping with these super high-end sensors, it's important to know that any camera that's over 55 megapixels requires an upgrade on Pix4D. So if you're using a Pix4D subscription to actually process your maps like we do, it's 300 bucks a month. If I want to process images that are 55 megapixels or more, it's going to be an upcharge. And I want to say it's, when I looked it up, it was either 250 or 270 as an upcharge every single month. Hmm. So it's a significant upcharge as soon as you go past 55 megapixel images. So if you can keep it under 54, you're going to be in good shape. So the uh, Phase 1 camera, I believe it's the IXU, um, is the 50 megapixel camera, and then the IXU RS1000 is the 100 megapixel camera. Now, both of them use a leaf style shutter. The leaf style shutter is kind of like the aperture on your camera. It kind of opens up these little leafs in a circular pattern. Um, now, that's, that's different from a focal plane shutter, which is not built into the lens. It's typically in the camera. Now, the leaf shutter is a global shutter, so you are not going to have the rolling shutter problems that you could see on other drones. Now, so we asked, is rolling shutter an issue? We had to really look this up. Uh, it is not an issue on these cameras. Now, although in looking this up, I found some really interesting information about rolling shutter. 
Um, so I, I actually found an old presentation from Pix4D given like three years ago, and they even posted the the drone the mapping problem that no one's talking about. Well, now we're talking about it. Uh, rolling shutter versus global shutter. Remember, I talked about this in a unique H520. Why this is a problem? Uh, they have one slide that actually gives the um, mathematical formula of why a rolling shutter camera is not good for drone mapping. Number one, the rolling shutter equation to get accuracy is C in parentheses T, which position of the image is a path, CT equals C over zero plus T pyramid thing C. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. Okay. Uh, the path needs to be estimated to get the highest level of accuracy. But in a global shutter, C, uh, the equation to get point C is much simpler, where C equals C over zero. So rolling shutter, uh, C equals C over T, C over zero plus T pyramid C. Okay, that's really, I'm not doing a good job of explaining this. Back to his question. Phase one, do they have this problem? No. Did I get a chance to look at the Hasselblad cameras? No, I did not. Can he use an A7R Mark III or an A7R Mark II or the A7 III camera uh, to do mapping? So one of the other questions that I really wanted to kind of showcase in this whole thing is, you know, we're doing a class here soon and, and Ken actually asked a question and we talked about a couple weeks ago saying he's already leading into that he's figuring out how to make the best mapping drone possible. So should you get an A7R Mark III or an A7 III? We're going to be doing a comparison, a sticks and stones comparison for, you know, if we shoot the same exact area, the same settings, what type of data are we going to get? Because when I talked to Pix40, he said pretty much the comparison between the A7 III and the A7R Mark III is not much different. The same sensor, it's a great camera, mechanical global shutter, um, unless you put the camera in silent mode. So that was another thing that Ken brought up in his question. What if I put the camera in silent mode? Do not put the camera in silent mode because you will get rolling shutter, okay? Um, so don't do that. Now, is there a clear answer on A7R Mark III versus A7 III, which is a bigger camera? No, there is not. Not right now. We're going to go after that. But with the A7R Mark III, because it's 43 or 42.4 megapixels versus 24 megapixels on the A7 III, you're going to be using a lot less images to really shoot the same area that you'll also get, quote unquote, higher detail. I don't know what that means as far as our sigma squared values go, though. So not a really clear answer. Can you get great mapping with the A6300, A6000, A6500? The answer is yes. Uh, again, mechanical shutter. Don't go in silent mode. You can mount it. You need to make sure, though, that you're at a fixed focal, uh, fixed focal length and a fixed lens. So don't be using the 16 to 50 millimeter lens. And I actually learned this just recently uh, in, in a high-level photogrammetry class. You never want to switch... Uh, the the zoom whenever you're mapping. So on the 3DR Solo, the nice one it comes with, the UMC, um, what is it called? The UMC R10C camera they have for the 3DR Solo, the bigger camera. It's pretty much an A6000 sensor with a fixed 16 to 50 millimeter lens. But then they would ship you another lens and say, don't use a 16 to 50. And I finally figured out why, because you don't want variable zoom. If you pick a zoom, pick the zoom and stick with the zoom the whole the whole time, the whole map. But anyway, why was I talking about that? Because um, the, the UMC R10C from 3DR is the exact same camera as an A6000. So you could get extremely good mapping data from that camera itself. Um, actually, pretty soon, I'm going to be sticking my 6300 on um, a, a drone that we are in the process of building right now. So I will let you know how that goes. The third part, do you need these really expensive cameras to do really high-end mapping? The answer is yes. If you look at the Intel Falcon 8 Plus, the new drone by Intel, it's the Falcon 8 Plus, not the Falcon 8. It's using the A7R Mark III, and they have now a new camera that where they partner with Sony, where it's pretty much the same camera broken down to an, a much smaller circular form, uh, form factor, like the UMC R10C camera from 3DR. Uh, so... Mm -hmm. If you want better detail, especially more lifelike detail, the A7R Mark III is probably going to be a great camera for you to get that detail. But if you really want solid data and you want to measure like the, the thickness of the, um, 
what is it called? Like the chair rail on a wall or something. Don't forget, you're going to have to play with your octree data level. That's hmm. really important. So anyway. So a quick question. Um, is a bit of clarification might help, at least for me, and so hopefully for other people as well. But when you use the term high-end mapping, mm-hmm. what is that relative to something that's not high-end mapping? And then what would drive the need for a higher-end camera to get that extra detail? Things like um, probably mapping like a dam where you really need to see cracks and you okay. need to see the, the, so how it's big all about the cracks the detail. are. Yeah, pretty much. So that, okay. You can get which, more information out of whatever it is that you're creating the image for. True, which is why I really want to test these two cameras because they're the exact same sensor. I mean, literally the same sensor. One is just 42 megapixels versus 24 mm-hmm. megapixels. And then it makes mm-hmm. you wonder, can I, ha- can I buy the cheaper one and just hack it? Hmm. Get the 42? That's a good question. Now I'm on a mission. Of course, would you end up, I don't know, it might be worth it to just spend the extra grand and get the better one, right? I'm, By the time it's, it's all it's said and done. It's a time money thing, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yes. There's not a lot of extra time to uh, go chasing that right now. Probably mm. any time. Anyways, it's just true. Thought. Very true. Very might good be point. more fun to try to hack it, though. Uh, there's already video. I've already found some videos. So <laughs> there you we're, go. We're on a good track here. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> All right. That is going to do it for us today. If you have a question, please go to askdroneu.com. And if you like the information that you hear, please let us know. Two ways. Number one, leave us a review. Or two, become a part of the largest online training community in the world now. Just go to droneu.education and check out one of the two new classes that just came out from DroneU. We'll see you there. My name is Paul. I'm Rob. This is Ask Drone You. (laughs) 